off at number 10 is the Ninjin. Arguably the most famous folklore creature associated with Antarctica, the Ninjin is said to be a terrifying deep sea cryptid that has been terrorizing sailors for centuries. First recorded in the early 1700s by Japanese sailors who were exploring the southern ocean, the Ninjin is often described as an enormous white creature with an elongated head and body that resembles that of a whale. But the creepiest part is that many tales describe it as having two human legs. I mean, just look at that thing. Creepy. Now, the ninja has recently had a sort of resurgence after an alleged government employee spotted the creature on a research vessel. Originally posted to 2chan, many others came forward with photos or video. They claim to be the exact same creature, but officially, no confirmation of its existence has ever been set in stone. Some think it could be an alien, others are firm that it's a sea monster, but either way, it is one of the most feared cryptids in all of the Antarctic. Moving on to number 9, Antarctic Godzilla. Deep in the freezing temperatures of the Antarctic Sea, it's said there lies a creature so frightening that even one look into their eyes could be your last. Allegedly first spotted by a Japanese research trip in 1958, the Antarctic Godzilla is described as a monster with a head length of 30 inches who looks like a cow from the front but a monkey from the top. Said to be covered in brown, dark hair with large eyes and pointed ears, the worst and scariest part of this creature is the serrated fin on its back that it can use to slice you in two at the slightest sign of aggression. Which frankly sounds terrifying. But it only gets worse. So as this creature is named Antarctic Godzilla, it's, you know, supposed to be super huge and terrifying, but it's believed that it can survive in not just water, but land too. So pretty much you are never safe. So really it's just one more reason that visiting the Antarctic isn't really for me. Moving on to number eight, an alien base. We have reached that time in our list where we get to talk about everyone's favorite mysterious being, the aliens of course. Now when it comes to aliens, there are lots of opinions about how real or not real they are, but if this next story is to be believed, there is allegedly a secret alien base with advanced and unconventional weapons hidden in the icy waters of the Antarctic. So according to a video uploaded by UFO hunters, a mysterious anomaly about 180 kilometers off the coast of Antarctica has been spotted and they think not only is it some kind of hangar for a spaceship, but that actual aliens are likely residing there too. Now this may be more on the conspiracy side of things rather than urban legend, but whatever. It's all fun. Believers claim that an expedition should be organized so we can confirm the existence of the aliens, but others think that if we aren't careful, we may just kick off an intergalactic war. So whatever it is, let's just hope we tread carefully. Moving on to number seven, Deception Island Sea Monster. In 1906, a Norwegian Chilean whaling company started using Whalers Bay as a base for their factory ship. Other operations followed closely behind them, and then the next thing you know, it was a boom town. But then by just 1931, after a sweeping decline in the market for whale oil due to the Great Depression, the island was abandoned. Since then, it has quite literally been a ghost town, with visitors reporting seeing strange orbs of light coming from the abandoned huts, seeing apparitions of people walking around, and even hearing disembodied voices. But it's not just ghosts and ghouls that are said to creep around the island, but a mysterious, inexplicable monster as well. This satellite image found on Google Earth has spawned numerous theories about what could be hiding in the area, but so far no one has ever come across it to be able to find out more. Next up at number 6, the Drake Passage. So obviously the Drake Passage itself is not an urban legend, there's no question about that, but there are many urban legends that go along with it. As many people likely already know, the Drake Passage is considered to be one of the most powerful convergence of seas. Located where the Atlantic and the Pacific Ocean converge with the Southern Seas, it is notorious for its treacherous waters and even more notorious for the alleged souls who lost their lives while trying to cross it. It's 
said over the years that more than a thousand people have died attempting to pass through its terrifying and turbulent waves, and many believe that all who have lost their lives to the passage remain haunting the waters to warn those that attempt the feat to turn back. However, the most terrifying legends say they are not there to warn you. They are trying to bring you into their realm with them. So cross the Drake Passage if you dare. Moving on to number 5, Fallen Angels. According to the Book of Enoch, which is an ancient Hebrew apocalyptic religious text, thousands of years ago, 200 fallen angels came down to earth and found solace on Mount Hermon. Upon their arrival, the fallen angels began to intertwine themselves with the inhabitants of the area, stealing away their daughters for themselves, and soon a war broke out with a hybrid race of giants called the Nephilim that ultimately punished the angels for eternity. After losing the war, it said the fallen angels were sent to be imprisoned in a mountain in Antarctica where they will remain frozen for eternity. But of course, there could be a way out of eternity, and some believe if we aren't careful, one one wrong move could unleash them from their icy prison and send the world into a celestial war. Coming in at number 4, a fascist base. In the late 1930s, just before World War II broke out, fascist Germany set out on an expedition to explore Antarctica and eventually came across a section of land that they declared was theirs. New Swabia. Now, this defunct area has long been the subject of legends and conspiracies through the years, but none more terrifying than the legend of the base. As the story goes, in the wake of the expedition, the party built a huge, top secret military base there. And after the war, high ranking leaders, scientists, and elite military units who were trying to evade their crimes are claimed to have escaped to this base and survived. But that's not all. Some stories say that this base is not just a top secret hideout for the world's most notorious and evil man, but since the party was often associated with occult practices, some say that the base also leads to aliens, demons, and even an entrance to inner earth. Moving on to number 3, Scott's Hut. During the early 1900s, there was a huge race to be the first country to reach the South Pole. Then in 1911, explorer Robert Falcon Scott and his team set out on a mission against Norway, later called the Terra Nova Expedition, to do just that. A hut was pre-constructed in Britain that was brought over as a base camp for the crew, and they set it up near the Great Ice Barrier. Eventually, it was decided some men would stay behind with supplies and shelter and the rest of the team would venture out further. But sadly, their mission was ultimately a bust, as by the time they reached the pole, the Norwegian flag had already been planted. So the men turned around to head back. But sadly, due to frostbite, starvation, and disease, the men died off one by one and never made their return. Ever since, legend has it that the hut is where the ghosts of the parish men live, and visitors claim that you can hear strange voices and footsteps all around the cabin. Apparently, the minute you walk in, you feel as though you're being watched, and some even swear they have seen the ghosts of Scott and his men lurk inside. Moving on to number 2, Mount Erebus. Mount Erebus is the southernmost volcano on Earth, and it is still very much active. Some like to refer to it as the place where fire meets ice, as well inside the mountain it is still swirling with hot molten magma. The outside remains frozen solid and surrounded by ice caves. And while that might sound super cool, it is also the site of the infamous Ross Island plane crash, and that is where our urban legend begins. One fateful day in 1979, a tourist plane from New Zealand was flying over Antarctica. Though exactly what happened is unknown, somehow the computer directing the flight got rerouted and instead of taking the usual route, ended up flying dangerously close to the mountain and in the blink of an eye, the plane crashed, instantly killing all 257 passengers and crew members on board. Said to be overwhelmed with ghosts seeking revenge for having their lives taken too soon, many of the spirits are said to roam the island, wandering around the frigid landscape waiting for 
unsuspecting visitors to walk past. And some say that if you walk past the mountain, you can still hear the screams of the victims who lost their lives to the crash. And last up in our number one spot today, the ghost ship of Jenny. As the legend goes, while crossing over the Drake Passage in 1823, the British vessel Jenny got stuck in the ice and was never seen again. For years, no one knew where it really was, what had happened to the boat, or if the crew had survived the treacherous crash. However, about 20 years later, it said a whaling ship discovered them and, believing it to be the legendary Jenny, decided to go on board and check out what might still be on it. Legend says the crew made their way onto the ship, but were horrified to find all the bodies frozen, solid, and perfectly preserved by the ice. However, the most disturbing part was the note they found in the hand of a corpse they believed to be the captain. The note read, May 4th, 1823. No food for 71 days. I am the only one left alive. It said the crew were so frightened of the sight that they left all the bodies alone and took only the logbook when they left. However, no one has ever seen the logbook or Jenny again, nor has anyone ever seen the men who allegedly discovered Jenny all those years ago. Starting off number 10 now, we have the Black Ghost of the Blue Mountains. If you ever head through Victoria Pass on Australia's Great Western Highway, keep an eye out at night. For more than a century now, truckers have reported seeing the ghost of a child bride called Carolyn Collette. She was beaten to death by her ex-boyfriend John Walsh in 1842 out there in the pass. Now they say her tortured soul haunts those who pass by on a dark cold night. It's claimed that the colder the night the better. When black ice covers the road threatening to spin vehicles down to their doom everyone is forced to slow down. Once everyone is slow Caroline is said to approach ready to seek vengeance for her gruesome death. Next up at number 9 now we have the burning airman. During World War 2 an Australian bomber plane crashed on the outskirts of Canberra, killing all four on board. It would become known as the Canberra Air Disaster. Years later, people in the area started reporting strange encounters in the woods. They said unearthly lights could be seen near the old crash site. Others heard the droning noise of a plane, followed by a loud bang. Then things got weirder. A teenage girl once ran screaming from the forest, saying that she was being followed by a long dead airman. She said he was covered in fire and that he followed her to the edge of the forest. More people began to report the same thing, horrific encounters that left people traumatized. The stories have been enough to turn some people away from the forest forever for fear of seeing this burning airman stalking them through the trees. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Kelly. This is a very creepy one that was shared on Reddit. User Puppy2010 said that they have relatives in the northern beaches area of Australia on the country's east coast. There, locals tell tales of a girl called Kelly who would appear in people's cars near Oxford Falls if they were travelling alone past midnight. She is said to be the spirit of a girl who died in a car crash there in the 1970s and has haunted the road ever since. For me though, the scariest part of the story is that if you don't tell Kelly to get out of the car, she will take control of the car. For those who believe in the tale of Kelly, they worry for the travellers who have never heard this story before and don't know to tell her to get out of the car. Next up at number 7 now we have the Orchard Hills Mafia House. This is a huge white mansion found out in Greater Sydney. You might say it was quite beautiful if not for the scary stories attached to it. For some ghost hunters, no place in Sydney has more spirits than the Orchard Hills Mafia House. Lights are said to just flash off and on even when the building is empty. From the outside, people have seen creepy shadows flickering behind the curtains. Some people even claim that these shadows come outside and approach visitors chasing them down the driveway with demonic grins on their faces. Why are there so many spirits said to live there? Well that goes back to the building's name. It's called the Mafia House because it was said to be owned by members of a local Mafia group. They were rumoured to routinely execute informants and snitches in one of the upstairs rooms. Between the murderous gangs and the spirits of their victims, many people choose to stay well clear of the big white mansion. Coming in at number 6 now we have the Hawkesbury River Monster. In a lot of these urban Legends videos, we've discussed creatures that bear a strange resemblance to the Loch Ness Monster. 
Well, perhaps this is Australia's version. The Hawkesbury River Monster is said to be a snake-like creature with a long neck, a large body and two sets of flippers with an eel-like tail. Locals tell fearsome tales of the beast and claim that they have proof to back it up. People point to the huge slide marks that keep appearing on the riverbanks or the crushed and abandoned boats with no owners in sight. Some say this is not a modern phenomena either and that the monster is depicted in the ancient Aboriginal art of that area. Moving on to number 5 now we have the Hands of Goodna Cemetery. Located on the outskirts of Brisbane, Goodna Cemetery doesn't look to be out of the ordinary at first. Those who visit it though do so because they have heard the stories of what goes on there after dark. According to local legend there is some sort of force in the cemetery. People describe it differently but one thing they all agree on is that this force does not like visitors. At night people feel invisible hands punching and scratching them. It's not just a light tap either. People say you'd know if the hands touch you. One particularly scary story involves a local man who once tried to flee the cemetery in his car, but the car just wouldn't start. He spent the night huddled in his car trying to ignore the strange noises outside. The next morning he stepped out and found long scratch marks all the way down the side of his car. Something had been trying to get in and get him. Moving on to number 4 now we have Schnee Alley. In the early 20th century, Dr. Schneider lived in Clifton Manor with his wife and child. Their lives were quite uneventful until one day when tragedy struck. Both the doctor's wife and child died in an accident. The doctor spiraled into madness. At first, it was just his personal life that was affected, but then it began to bleed into his work. He would take his patients to a little log cabin near his house where he performed surgical experiments on them without anesthetic. The house saw him mutilate cows countless people. The locals say that in the years since then they've seen his disfigured patients wandering the hills around the house and lurking in the alley. At night distant screams can be heard from those still reliving their operations. Some brave souls visit the house to try and catch their sounds. Next up at number 3 now we have the Satanist Cult. The Kings Park in Perth draws in many visitors during the day but at night it plays host to all kinds of spooky legends. One of this is the Satanic Cult. It said that on certain nights a secret group of devil worshippers descend upon the park where they perform strange rituals. Occult symbols are drawn, effigies are burnt and all kinds of demonic behaviour takes place upon the grassy slopes there. Some even say that human sacrifices happen there. This legend has only been fuelled by the reports of local homeless men going missing after they visit the park. People believe that sleeping in the park after dark is inviting yourself to be killed in the name of the demons that the cult worships. Next up at number 2 now we have the Markery Field Station. In the southwest suburb of Sydney lies a train station with a grisly secret. When the last train leaves Markery Field Station and the platform is totally empty, a faint cry can be heard in the breeze. Believers say the station is haunted. For those that find the crying scary to hear, things only get worse. Some say the crying eventually stops and then, after a short pause, it turns to blood curdling screams of anguish. On some occasions people even see the ghost itself, a teenage girl roaming the platform with dark blood covering her face. She cries and cries then screams and screams. For me though the creepiest part is that sometimes she stares right at you. And finally number 1 now we have the Min Min Lights. Those who have ventured to Eastern Australia's outback will often return with tales of the Min Min Lights. On some nights burning lights are said to appear in the distance but never get closer. They keep pace alongside the car but never get any nearer, almost as if it was watching you. Some people believe that if you leave your car the lights will stalk you through the Australian outback. But hey, don't take my word for it. Unlike many of the other ones we've talked about on our list, there has been documented cases of the Min Min lights. You can find footage on YouTube filmed by locals. In 2003 a report suggested that the lights are just a trick of the light and appear under certain conditions. Others believe this only deepens the conspiracy. They say the government is trying to shake people off the trail and not discover the true nature of the Min Min lights. Starting us off at number 10 is the Wendigo. Arguably the most well known of the indigenous legends is that of the flesh eating Wendigo from the Algonquin tribes of North America. Now with any legend there is always a few variants but the widely told story is that the Wendigo was once a lost hunter roaming the woods who during the cold winter was running out of food to eat. Hungry, 
cold and alone, the man turned to one of the greatest misdeeds one could. He began to eat the flesh of another human. Not long after, he turned into a giant beast, satiated for flesh, and continued to haunt the woods, looking for lone travelers to devour. It's said that anyone can turn into a Wendigo, as it is merely a human possessed by evil spirits due to a sinful choice, most commonly eating flesh, but some believe selfishness or gluttony can also bring the beast forward. Most terrifying of all is that many believe it may be more than just a story. Between the 1800s to 1920s, there were countless alleged sightings of the man-eating monster, and even as recently as 2019, a group of hikers swear they saw one roaming in the woods, but as with all urban legend, no one has been able to come forward with enough concrete proof to prove it once and for all. Let's just hope they saw something else in the woods, cause this is one monster I would not want to come face to face with. Next up at number 9 are owls. As told by the Yakima people, there were once five sisters living in a cave. But these sisters were no normal humans of course, they were witches who feasted on vile things like frogs, lizards, snakes, mice, and most cruel of all, they would feast on the flesh of people. Eventually there was a large battle between the villagers and these witches were killed off one by one. The local tribespeople were overjoyed to have their evil presence diminishing, that was until the final sister died and left a curse behind her. As legend has it, the last sister drowned, and from her eyeball, all the owls of the world were created, and their spirits lived on through the owls, always watching and haunting any that pass by. In other stories like that of the Choctaw mythology, the, the owl deity is known as the Aishikitani, or the horned owl, and is believed to hunt men at night, only ever warning its prey with a blood-curdling screech right before your sudden death. Either way, I'm not sure I will ever be able to look at an owl the same again. Coming in at number 8, the Chindi. According to Navajo legend, the Chindi is the bad energy left behind by those who passed away. It's believed to be kind of like a ghost that is released from the human body on their last breath. And then it's everything that was bad about the person, sort of like the residue of what they were not able to bring into harmony. But what's scariest about the Chindi is that it can haunt the living. In fact, in fact, many believe that contact with the chindi can cause illness or even death. Because of this, traditional Navajo practice always aimed to have death occur outdoors, hoping that it would give more space for the chindi to leave and less room for it to attach to the living. If death occurred inside a house, that house was pretty much doomed and was believed to be eternally haunted by the chindi, so it was customary to destroy the deceased possessions to reduce the chance of the chindi lingering around and latching onto the living. One step further, traditional Additionally, you shouldn't even dare utter the name of whoever died so as not to tempt the chindi to come near. For once it was close, you were likely the next one to go. Coming in at number 7 is the Adlet. Up in the icy arctic lies a terrifying humanoid beast that's said to have the legs of a dog and the body of a person. The legend comes from the Inuit people and is said to be the product of a shocking union between a woman and a giant dog. As the story goes, there once was a woman who lived with her father and refused to marry any of the suitors he brought her way. Then after some time, she decided to marry a large dog with red and white spots. The woman was soon carrying the dog's offspring, and of their ten kin, five were dogs and five were adlet. Soon their young were hungry, but as their father did not hunt, it became the mother's father's job to provide for the household. He loaded up the family into a boat and carried them off to a small island, telling the dog to to come and get meat daily. One day the wife hangs boots around her husband's neck to carry back the meat, but instead her father fills the boots with stones and the dog drowns. The mother is so angry that she orders her adlet offspring to gnaw off her father's feet and hands, but in retaliation he cuts off one of her fingers. Afraid that he will kill her adlets, she sends five of them across the ocean, but those that stayed behind with her turned into vicious human eating monsters who were constantly at war with the Inuit people. 
I mean, top to bottom, it's all pretty wild. Coming in at number six are stick people. In the traditions of the Salish communities, there is a legend of large, hairy spirits named stick people who are said to haunt the forest of Western Canada. These monsters are said to be incredibly dangerous and capable of paralyzing, hypnotizing, or even causing insanity in those who dare cross them. But that isn't even the worst of it. In some stories told, these ghoulish creatures will prey on lonely wanderers, sometimes making eerie sounds to trick them before kidnapping, eating, or even taking advantage of their victims. And if you try to defend yourself, you will only make matters worse. It's said stick people do not take kindly to any kind of disrespect, no matter how unintentional. And if they perceive that you are trying to hurt them, either physically or emotionally, they will attack you with even more gruesome force. In fact, the Salish people are so terrified of these monsters that the actual name for them is practically unheard of, as saying their real name in public is seen as an act of provoking the creature. Because of this, they are typically only ever referred to by their English name, so as not to upset the deadly creature and send it looking for you. Coming in at number five, skinwalkers. According to Navajo culture, the skinwalker is a terrifying and evil witch with the ability to shape shift into a terrifying humanoid beast. What's interesting about the legend of the skinwalker is its connection to their views of magic itself. In Navajo culture, traditional healers were known as medicine men or women, and they learned both good and evil magic. At one time, all the witches were once medicine men or women who could not handle the responsibility, and so they began to use their magic for evil instead of good. It's said that once in their skinwalker form, they are nearly indestructible and will wreak havoc on farmers' livestock or the people in the village that cross their path, and can only be killed by a bullet or by a knife dipped in white ash. Overall, the legend surrounding the skinwalker is incredibly mysterious, and for good reason. The Navajo people are very reluctant to tell their story of the deadly creature to those outside their community. As you see, it's believed even mentioning a skinwalker in passing will attract bad luck and make their appearances more likely, potentially even attracting one to come near you. So they avoid speaking on it at all costs. With that in mind, maybe we should move on to the next one. I'm not here to attract an evil witch my way after all. Next up at number four, the Uktena. There are many different cultures worldwide who have a tale of a giant serpent or dragon, but one of the scariest might be that of the Uktena. According to Cherokee legend, origins of the creature began long ago when the sun sent a sickness down to earth to kill all of its people, and so a man changed into a horned snake to try and kill the sun, but he failed. Next, a rattlesnake took a shot and succeeded. The Uktena was apparently so jealous and angry over his failure that his people began to feel afraid of him, so they banished him to the woods to live out his life in isolation. But of course, he was not entirely left alone. You see, most commonly the Uktena is described as being a dragon-like, horned serpent creature with wings and a blazing diamond on its forehead. The blazing diamond, called Ulunsuti, and whoever can defeat the beast and win it may become the greatest warrior in the tribe. However, as legend has it, the diamond puts warriors into a trance, as it's so beautiful and so bright that warriors will run towards the monster instead of trying to escape. As the story goes, only one man has ever been able to fetch the diamond from the beast's forehead and live to tell the tale. Coming in at number three, the Scatamagooch. Mentioned in the legends of the Wabanaki, the Scatamaduch is a terrifying ghost witch that will definitely give you nightmares. Said to be an evil sorcerer that refuses to stay among the dead, the evil Scatagamooch will emerge at night taking the shape of a ball of light, stalking the open woods looking for humans to devour, as it is the only way to fight off mortality. Also, I just have to mention, how many paranormal stories have you heard where some strange orb of light was seen? Could it be that it was an evil flesh-eating sorcerer stalking them this whole time? I mean, if so, that would be terrifying. Despite their undead nature, they still have full control over their powers and are able to cast a curse on their victims, but some are more susceptible than others. For example, they're said to stalk unsuspecting victims, often those in grief, so funerals are often associated with the ghouls. They also prey on lone travelers, especially those that have been separated from their group in the woods as they are more vulnerable 
in the world this way. Since they retain their powers, there are no weapons that can be used against them. The only way to kill one of these demonic vampire witches is the same way witches were killed for centuries, by burning them. But let's just hope that you can get to them before they get to you. Next up at number 2 is the Kalupalik. Deep under the icy waters of the freezing arctic is another creature from Inuit folklore, the incredibly terrifying half-human sea monster known as the Kalupalik. Described as slimy green-skinned humanoid creatures with long fingers, the scariest thing about these creatures is not how they look but what they do. As the legend goes, the Kalupalik hides under the ice waiting for vulnerable young ones to be playing near the edge. It will then tap its green fingers on the ice or softly hum to lure its victim in close. Once they can reach their prey, they will snatch up the little one, placing it in their amotic, a parka worn by Inuit women with a built-in carrying pouch, and bring them down into their underwater lair and keep them forever. It's said they prey on the young as they this halts their aging. The older the victim grows, the younger she gets. The greener her skin stays, and the more lush her hair. While no one can know for sure, it is believed this origin was mostly used as a cautionary tale to keep little ones away from the edge of the ice, but you never really know how much truth could be involved. And last up in our number one spot today is the flying head. Most popular among the Iroquois Confederacy, or Haudenosaunee in their language, is the legend of the flying head. According to the legend, the flying head was exactly as it sounded. A giant, floating, disembodied head with fiery eyes and tangled hair who floated through the air hunting for humans to devour. While the exact origins of the story are unknown, it's widely believed that the folklore derived from a betrayal of elders within an unknown tribe. As the story goes, there was a terrible famine, and the young people insisted that they should relocate to where there would be more. The elders, however, insisted insisted they stay put as the famine was actually a curse placed on them by their creator and that it will follow them no matter where they are. Eventually, the disagreement got so out of hand that the young men killed the elders by decapitating them and throwing their heads into the nearby lake. But to their horror, the deceased came back to life, merging into one enormous head seeking vengeance on the young men who killed them. In retaliation, the flying head took the lives of the entire tribe and feasted on their flesh. It's said that no man-made weapon can take the creatures down, and the only way to beat them is by tricking them into eating hot coals. I mean, if that's not terrifying, I don't know what is. Mm -hmm. 